Hi, I'm Chuck Friedman, Director of Developer Advocacy at Akamai Technologies. Every day I get to work with people who are finding success on our platform and within our community. Come join me as we talk about the journey it took to get there and some insightful stories that they can share about their experience along the way. Welcome to the Developer's Edge. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Developer's Edge. So excited for today's episode. We have a genuine, brilliant developer here with us as our guest. So happy and excited to welcome Ted Smith. Ted, welcome. Hey, thanks, it's good to be here. So Ted, tell us a little bit more about your current role at Akamai and what do you do on a, on a daily or weekly basis? Yeah, so I'm a solutions engineer here, which means that I work closely with our sales team to craft technical solutions that are appropriate for our customers' issues. And in particular, I work with our direct-to-consumer group. So that's handling all of our really large media streaming accounts. So I'm, I'm working with all the big streamers, people like And that's, that's really my world, is streaming media. How does a company like Akamai actually come into play when we're talking about streaming content? So if you think about pulling a static piece of content down from the internet, let's pretend that it's actually a video file. It's a 30-minute episode of some show. Back in the day, that might have been an MP4 file, so one single object. And as Akamai, we could sit in the middle of wherever that's hosted, likely an S3 bucket somewhere, even our own net storage. We would proxy that, slowly serve those bits out to the end user. And you've probably seen this in the past, you know, a decade or so ago, you'd hit play on a file and you could see your buffer growing and growing. And finally, you'd get to the point where, hey, I, I could cut off my internet connection and still play back the rest of this file. It's because we just downloaded that whole episode. The way it works today is that we do something called segmented streaming or adapted bitrate streaming. So instead of just downloading an entire video file, we've chopped it up into multiple smaller segments that are just a few seconds long. And we've got those at different quality levels. And the reason this is a benefit is that while you're playing back a video, instead of just downloading the whole thing, if all of a sudden you have a drop in throughput in your internet, we can say, you know what? Hey, let's actually grab a lower resolution version of this video for the next few segments to keep it from having to rebuffer. And then we can bump back up to the high quality once your connection is good again. So, and I promise this is going somewhere. Each of those individual files is just a small static video file that's maybe a couple megs large depending on the quality. So just in the same way that Akamai could distribute out a static HTML page or an image or a JavaScript file, we're doing that same thing for these video segments. What I'm interested in is what, what are some of the methods that have sort of changed over the past six years that have allowed you to enable developers more successfully? So I think the first part is definitely that communication mechanism has changed drastically. It used to be emails and phone calls. And now we're interacting with customers who are so streamlined and efficient that like, I don't even have time to read an email. I don't have time to hop on the phone. Just, just shoot it to me over Slack. And that, that's the answer I'm getting at is that almost everything these days is done over Slack, whether it be dropping a set of documentation, sending someone a code sample. Um, and half the time, it's not even a person I'm talking to. It's some bot, right, that they've set up to kind of orchestrate this whole thing. So it's been really interesting to see how that communication layer has drastically changed over the last six years, and particularly with the developers that we're interacting with. Awesome, that's really cool. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's great for to have someone like you in your role too that can kind of see the future a bit and see where it might be going or see where, where the innovation is gonna lead us. So Ted, you're part of this internal group that we have, which hopefully we'll make external at some point, which is our developer champions. It's a collection of experts and many folks like you and I and our team that are very passionate about developer success and enabling them. And um, what's your experience been with that group so far? It's been awesome. Like, like you mentioned that passion before, and I always, especially kind of existing in my somewhat sales oriented role and not getting to play with code as much as I wanted. I felt a little bit siloed in that I was the only one on my team kind of doing what I was doing. And then all of a sudden I got exposed to the rest of the developer champions team. I'm like, oh, there's other mad scientists here. This is amazing. We've got a community of people who are equally as like creative and driven and uh, appropriately cynical at times. So it was just, I found a, a home in this program with a whole bunch of other people who are just pushing the limits, uh, people that I can kind of aspire to catch up to. 
it, it kind of reminded me actually, I was on a bike ride a couple years ago and I was uh, going up this really steep climb and someone flew by me. And I even mentioned on the way, uh, I'm like, oh man, I, I usually don't get past. And the guy shouted back to me, if you're, if you're the smartest one in the room, you're in the wrong room. And that statement stuck with me for a long time. So being a part of the developer champions team and seeing a bunch of people who are like pushing the limits even more than I am, like, awesome, this is good. It's the drive that I need to, you know, keep pushing this forward as much as I can. That was amazing. Um, you as an individual in, in your role, what are some of the go-to resources that you leverage that either internally or externally? <laughs> uh, Stack Exchange all the time. I'll say that it, because I'm not developing full time anymore, a lot of times when I'm fielding questions, it's okay, absolutely. Let me let me go figure that out for you, which what I'm really saying is let me go learn how to do that real quick. So I, I'm constantly either reteaching myself, reeducating myself or just learning something completely new. And I, I know that Stack Exchange can be kind of like the Wikipedia of the engineering world. You got to take everything you see with a grain of salt there. But to be honest, it's usually the first search that I drop on and it'll be enough to give me kind of a starting point to, okay, I, I'm not 100% sure I trust this is the way to do it, but it's at least something I can try and evolve into what I'm trying to accomplish ultimately. More personally, not to say that our work isn't very personal, because it is, uh -huh. but other things that you're interested in beyond the technology side of your life, do you, do you apply this sort of let me research let me let me go to something like a stack overflow or a comparable resource uh for other things that you might you might do in your in your spare time yeah it, absolutely it, it's funny because i've i've told people before that like when i talk about hobbies my hobby is collecting hobbies right i'm just always bouncing from one thing to another and i think the reason i like that so much is because it gives me a really good excuse to kind of research and educate myself on something new that's, that's really the part that I like. I'll get to a point where I feel like, okay, I've gotten okay at this new thing that I wanna do, but I've already done the fun part. It's not the actual task, it was the research that led up to me being able to accomplish the task. The things that drive me to do what I do are like data gathering and learning and education. So that's, that's probably the spark in the back of my mind that makes me do what I do, whether it be professionally or in my own personal life. Awesome. Well, on that note, I want to thank you again, Ted, for spending some time with us on the Developer's Edge. It's been amazing to get to know you a bit more, uh, continuing to get your insight and everything that's led you on your journey and enabled you to support others, uh, our customers, our developers, to be successful with the platform. Uh, really great to have you here today. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed our conversation with Ted, and we'll look forward to seeing everybody next time. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. If you like it and want to see more, please subscribe to the Akamai Developer channel, hit like, and you'll get notified when we have future episodes available. You can also browse our other developer content in series. Till next time, take care and see you soon.